Lake Mead within Nevada, home to the famous Hoover Dam, one of the largest man-made concrete structures on Earth, and what many feel will be the last surviving remnant of our civilization's existence on this planet. Although it is also home to a number of other lesser-known yet just as astonishing feats of human engineering. Similar to that of the incredible finds we have previously covered, an ancient mine, and although we know it was created for the collection of salt, the date of its creation remains a mystery with evidential examples of activity within this mine, not only by a now lost civilization, but one that easily predated even that of the Native American himself. As mentioned in the Scientific American of 1926, quote, Mines were operating in Nevada many centuries before the days of Aurora and Piyush of Virginia City. One of the discoveries made by archaeologists now delving into the ruins of Pueblo Grande. Many centuries is putting it mildly, for the finds show that mining was in progress at the beginning of the Christian era, some 20 centuries ago and there are strong indications which point to work created at an even earlier period." End quote. Mysterious circular carving, reminiscent of those of Baalbek, Aswan, Bazda Caves, Longyu, etc., are present within the mine, and although it is claimed these were made with stone picks, a true explanation as to the real technology or tools used to liberate this salt is yet to be discovered. Yet the reasoning behind such circular carving has seemingly been unraveled by a find at the bottom or oldest parts of the mine. The salt was seemingly isolated in these circular carving marks as they became deeper and deeper. Then the center block of rock salt was believed to have been broken off by hand and taken out by the miners. What is truly astonishing about this mine is its size. Although initial investigations of the cavern were to identify its purpose, this salt mine has since been bought by industries invested in salt production due to its quality. Yet the mystery surrounding how these ancient people discovered this vault of salt, or indeed how they carved their way through an entire mountain in its pursuit, if we assume them to have been primitive in nature and ability, remains an absolute enigma. However, if one were to allocate such feats to a more developed human state, identifying this huge deposit of salt, and indeed the adaptive stone-cutting technologies we feel were clearly used elsewhere, incorporated into this mining process, and explain how they managed to dig to such depths here, and indeed at other astonishing ancient sites the world over, are rather easier to explain. Yet, I digress. Regardless of our own suspicions as to how this incredible mine was created, its existence alone, we feel, is proof that those responsible had far more knowledge and capabilities than modern man gives them credit for. It is an incredibly ancient mine, one in which we and indeed many others within our field find incredibly compelling. Something which has always puzzled us at Mystery History, although the mountains of pyramids, the gigantic megaliths, indestructible artifacts, or the out-of-place artifacts, is the massive amount of underground cities found all over our planet. Extraordinary undertakings, seemingly necessary at some time in the very distant past, complex tunnel networks almost telepathically hewn direct to each other. Cut from hard bedrocks, with many exhibiting considerable efforts committed into security. Huge rolling doors can be found at many crucial junctions within the underground systems, as can be found, for example, amongst the underground cities of Cappadocia. Derinkuya, in particular, still exhibits its rolling doors still in situ. No one displaying the builder's impressive capabilities, but also the abilities of the rolling stone operators as whoever built these contraptions unarguably still possessed megalithic stone-moving knowledge, knowledge we hypothesize is lost knowledge, due to the builders of said sites also a lost civilization, which instead of where they have been placed chronologically by funded investigations, actually, we believe, originate an unimaginably longer time ago, 
place far within in antiquity not only lost, but actively dismissed. But regardless of the impressive feats these underground cities were to create, the question persists, why? Why go to so much effort? The cities of Uskanakt, Derinkuyu, and Kaimakli, all found just within Cappadocia, Turkey, are not only some of the most complete underground dwellings, with Derinkuyu estimated to have once been capable of housing 20,000 people. Derinkuyu even connects to Kaimakli via an underground tunnel, an astonishing 8 kilometers long. And this is but a tiny fraction of the ancient underground cities, which have so far been found all over the world with more discovered each day. Many seem to have simply been sealed when no longer needed, thus many still lay undisturbed to this day. Derinkuyu, for example, was only rediscovered when a wall was knocked down in a house during renovation work. All seemingly constructed around the same time, yet any definitive motivations for why ancient man decided upon such drastic efforts worldwide have yet to be substantiated. Their construction remains a complete mystery, a fact we find highly intriguing. Many people will argue that these cities were chiseled by slaves over many years and at great suffering, a safe bet narrative which jives with the mainstream. When it comes to the academically claimed ages, and due to the people during said ages substantially lacked any advanced stone-cutting technologies imperative for creating such vast works. This argument, however, thanks to the volumes of examples of exquisite, astounding feats discovered as a special few of these underground complexes, not only installed clearly to demonstrate an acoustic level of awareness on par with prodigal ability and possibly many other as yet undeciphered features displaying excelled understanding of many of life's most intriguing subjects. The Hypogeum, located within modern-day Malta, is but one of many examples which can be presented as proof that whoever built these underground layers at minimum possessed astonishing acoustic knowledge, far ahead of man, as well as almost physics-defying stone-moving techniques displayed in the structure itself. The Hypogeum possesses a characteristic designed into its construction, which is simply astonishing. It is so mystifying that although very little is known regarding how it was achieved, a certain frequency it can amplify which seems to stimulate the building's amplifying capabilities, as if the entire structure resonates, and has since been shown to also affect the human brain, becoming known as the God Frequency. Who built these underground labyrinths? Why? When did they build them? We find these incredible relics of a lost civilization highly compelling. We are often confronted with peculiar, seemingly impossible artifacts that will, after some in-depth investigation, leave one with more questions than answers. This, either due to their enormous, often seemingly impossible sizes, megaliths in some locations weighing far over 1,000 tons. Somehow, once used in their construction, sometimes set aloft, proof that not only were these stones hewn but moved and lifted seemingly with ease. But also, alas, the lack of public exposure many said sites are granted, often minimal at best, thus countless examples of advanced ancient technology remain still hidden here upon our planet. As a consequence, many have avoided scrutiny. Details therein which are clearly of a controversial nature are conveniently absent any funded studies of said ruins. We feel ruins of great importance but due to the strength of evidence one can surmount in support of past, once highly advanced ancient civilizations at said locations, they are largely overlooked and actively avoided by funded archaeologists, academics, and historians alike en masse. Simply ignored, thus preventing all from what we feel is a birthright, an accurate, warts and all, transparent exploration of the origins of humanity and, in turn, the history of our planet. Allowing one and all to make up their own minds in regard to the origin of said sites, no matter how controversial. This is the exact reason for the channel's creation. 
and is the driving force behind the six books one intends to write, a revolutionary cataloging of once, yet no more, deliberately overlooked or academically dismissed sites, dotted all over the world. For when one explores our content, they will be made aware of a smorgasbord of unique and often inexplicable features which can be found all over Earth. In addition, it is not just the visible feats of ancient stoneworking that are the singular astonishing legacy left by a now lost, once highly advanced ancient civilization. For there are many other feats accomplished in a bygone era. Prehistoric mine shafts can still be found in many areas of Earth. Not only are there still existing, seemingly machine-cut, extremely ancient, incredibly deep mine shafts in a number of areas of Earth, including those featured found within Tel Aviv, are all but one among many relics, all clearly left by a capable group hidden from the world. But ancient cities exist also, ones covered previously, which were all once somehow cut from Earth's bedrock, that due to their location have fortunately been explored by a number of individuals over the years, never funded, but merely driven by curiosity. Thus, the true astonishing depth, and indeed the incredible achievement these once were, has all been previously documented. Civilizations that were once capable of not just digging these mines to incredible depths, but were, in fact, capable of creating entire temples from one gigantic solid stone, cut with such incredible artistic ability and accuracy, they are staggering examples of ancient engineering. In China and Japan, gigantic megaliths left, mysteriously abandoned, Easter Island, the unfinished obelisk Aswa, Egypt, Yangshan Quarry within China, all abandoned, with Yangshan possessing an almost detached megalith, clearly cut using incredible stone-cutting tools, a block estimated as weighing 16,000 tons when liberated from the bedrock. All these anomalies are but a few examples which support the premise of lost technology, knowledge, and an advanced civilization. It seems that the advanced mines, like those found in Tel Aviv, are but a tip of an archaeological iceberg in regards to the mystifying stone-cutting of a now lost antiquity. Why did humans placed within a lost chapter of antiquity exert such backbreaking effort in the attempt of extracting these precious metals? Who dug the Tel Aviv mines? Was it the same group who built ancient Peru? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Known as the Kola Super Deep Borehole, it was a Soviet engineering project that occurred from the late 1960s to the early 1990s. Going to a depth of 40,000 feet, operations on the site ceased after they reached unbearable heat levels as they predictably got closer and closer to the Earth's superheated molten core. It is known as the deepest hole on Earth and long held the title as the deepest hole humans had ever dug. A test in machinery's capabilities and to see how far into the Earth they could bore before they were inevitably turned away from unbearable heat. Yet, interestingly, although this borehole is located on a remote peninsula in northern Russia, thus making it a very minimal danger to human life, it was hurriedly sealed up after a fossil was found, reportedly at 40,000 feet deep within our Earth's mantle. The drilling operation reportedly went through a layer of ancient plankton, which brought up life forms dated at two and a half billion years old. The question is, what was this fossil? Why would rumors circle that that is the reason for sealing this borehole? When sealed, even though it presented no real danger to anyone. Why would sites such as Snopes get involved in trying to discredit these claims? There are many things within modern historical understanding which have been born out of another area of history, which was, unfortunately, built upon an initial faulty foundation, this often being timelines and an ignorant lack of awareness of ancient high technology. So if something arises which casts doubt on these areas of teaching, it can have a catastrophic effect on other areas of academia 
Thus, this would indeed give motive to cease any such operations, and to hastily stonewall, or in this case, seal any access to the location, thus covering up any further discoveries. What was found within the Kola Superdeep borehole? We find the possibilities highly compelling. We have, in the past, investigated the still unexplained, now lost, stonewalling technique, now commonly referred to as polygonal masonry. We have described the incredible feat that this technique involved, the mystery of how an ancient civilization once cut and perfectly fitted together these enormous jigsaw puzzles, sometimes comprised of megalithic blocks weighing many tons in weight. However, we have also covered the coalescence of this polygonal technique with another, which has become known as Cyclopean within Italy, with the Cyclopean walls built upon those by those who possess the ability to create polygonal masonry. All but proving that this Cyclopean technique predated that of seemingly more competent polygonal technique. But just how old these techniques are, or indeed the age of these structures themselves, is now lost to history. However, our next area of interest may shed some light on these sites' considerable age, if you consider the evidence that the site itself presents. Known as the Pelasgic Wall, it is located upon a gigantic, once leveled natural rock within the Acropolis of Athens. The wall, during the time of Thucydides, was claimed to have stood several meters high and six meters broad. It surrounded the entirety of the ruin, with a large visible fragment of the original wall, demonstrating this claimed scale still standing and located upon the southern side, close to the original entrance. Yet today, the beveling can be seen, but the wall has all but vanished, with the foundation of the wall laying below several feet of natural sediment buildup, indicative of a tremendous age. Said to have been built by the Pelagians, hence the name given to the wall. Not only does the sediment present at the site suggest a far more tremendous age, but the sheer size of the structure, along with the rock it now sits upon that was entirely leveled at some point within ancient antiquity, all points to an ancient feat far beyond the capability of known ancient Grecians. And just like that of polygonal masonry, predictably can be seen at sites just like that of polygonal which are often surrounded by controversy when it comes to the claim construction and origin of said sites. We logically conclude that these attributions to different groups within known history, easily identified in other locations where these groups never ventured, is solid proof that those who state such false truths know they are indeed being deceptive. It is a ruin which we find highly compelling. We have in the past covered the fascinating fossilized footprints of apparent ancient giants that may have once roamed our Earth. These prints, undoubtedly of a tremendous age, a timeline and existence which flies in the face of current teachings. Along with these giant prints, we have also touched upon the baffling, seemingly melted handprints found upon stones within Wyoming. Yet one area of fossilized prints which have seemingly slipped through our radar until they were recently brought to our attention is the vast array of extremely ancient human-sized prints found throughout the world. In this segment, we will specifically focus upon those found within St. Louis, firstly due to their remarkable nature, but also due to a curious letter received by a fellow of similar interests recorded by William R. Corliss in his source book, Volume Strange Artifacts, sent in 1837 by an English geologist. It read as follows, quote, Lest I should again neglect to call your attention to a subject to which I have long since intended to claim your particular regard, I will in this brief space allude to it. In the fifth volume of your journal, 1822, there are remarks on the prints of human feet observed in the secondary limestone of the Valley of the Mississippi by Mr. Schoolcraft and Mr. Benton, with a plate representing the impressions of two feet. 
ever since my researches on Ripple Sandstones, published in Jameson's Edinburgh Journal, I felt persuaded the prints alluded to were the genuine impressions of human feet, made in the limestone when wet. I cannot go on with the arguments that may be urged in proof of my opinion, but rely upon it. Those prints are certain evidence that man existed at the epoch of the deposition of that limestone, as the birds that lived when the new red sandstone was formed. Get all the evidence on this head you can, rely upon its most important results will be its consequence." He continued, His fellow friend Sir Woodbine Parrish, who was seemingly an English knight of the realm, was familiar with other prints. Quotes, tells me of similar impressions which have been seen in South America, and there was a dispute among the top Catholic sects as to whether they were the prints of the apostles themselves." End quote. These mountains of accounts and actual physical proofs that man may be very much older than currently argued, we not only found seemingly overwhelming, but certain individuals' denial of such highly compelling.